Hi, everyone. I'm Logan Baldwin. I'm the executive director of Climate Film. And with me, I have Roberta Convinchera, writer and director of Navidad de Reserva. Did I get all that right? Yes. Fantastic. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your filmmaking background? Um, of course, I started first I started doing theater at 10 years old and took a lot of um, community center theater classes in any free space my parents could find. Uh, I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I grew up in a very working class family. And uh, so for them, it was almost impossible to help me develop anything in the realm of arts. So I didn't really consider film or a career in film up until I was 20 years old uh, when I found out that um, film school was free in my country. And so that's when I signed up for film school and I got accepted. And I've been exploring the film as a form of art ever since. Fantastic. What school did you go to? Uh, I went to the Instituto de Arte Cinematográfico de Avellaneda. Um, it's called IDAC. It's um, the film school of Avellaneda, a small city in Buenos Aires province. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, I imagine this is not your first uh, short film you've directed. Is that right? It's my first short film. It is? Oh, well, it's amazing. It's an amazing first short film. <laughs> I really, you. really loved it. I, I saw that you um, got a uh, an award for best screenplay uh, before, and I, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think it's really, really great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got... Um, I got an award for best screenplay for a grant, and then I won an award for post production. Um, they had seen like a rough cut in my application, and they helped me to finish the project. And I recently got um, special mention for a short film at a festival in Argentina. So people really resonate with it, and that makes me really happy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I really, I really loved. Uh this one too. I really loved it. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, your director's statement on Film Freeway, uh, it mentions the uh, Little Miss Sunshine and the impact it had on you. How did that film influence your approach to storytelling for Navidad de Reserva? Um, it's a movie that I always think about because everything that happens to that family while they're trying to get to this Little Miss Sunshine concept, contest is incredibly extraordinary and tragic. And it's all related to the tribulations of belonging to the working class. Because um, his family couldn't afford to fly in. They had this, this van that the clutch was broken and they had to push it every time. And, you know, and, and I think that at some point, the parents knew that this wasn't the environment they wanted the kid to be in because they don't belong there. And it gets proven when they get there and they realize this is not for the kind of people they are. And they still take over and they still do whatever they want. And then they end up in the police department. But was it worth it? Totally. And I think that... That's what makes me think about the fact that sometimes things are terrible, yeah, but movies don't focus enough on the little victories that happen when you're going through a conflict. Movies are written in a way that's like very three acts, enticing incident, and because of the system that we live in also, the line that of the themes that most movies follow is like person A is sad, gets to the last point of the story, and then magically th things resolved and everyone's happy. But what about when things don't get resolved, which is most of our lives? Things don't always go the way that you want them to go, but the path that got you there finds moments where like you find happiness 
even though it's small, you know, or like little victories. And I feel like uh, filmmaking these days doesn't focus so much on that. It's more like, oh, look at this person. Like they were really poor. Now they're rich. End of the movie. Yeah. Where's the fun on that? Absolutely. I, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. Where where does the inspiration for the story uh, come here? Have you is this something that you have experienced or people you know have experienced? Yeah, definitely. Um, the, I wrote this during um, the pandemic in twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It was mostly because the pandemic was not affecting me or any of my undocumented friends. And what I realized wasn't affecting me in the way that like I already wasn't able to leave my city uh, i was living here in portland i was undocumented and i hadn't seen my family for four years at that point so for me i had been on an isolation state for four years and i have friends who have been in this situation for 10 friends that have been in the situation for 20 friends that have lost their parents and haven't been able to leave the country and sometimes it's not even their fault like i have Friends that are on a visa that they give you if you were brought illegally as a baby, but it doesn't allow you to leave the country and it punishes you in that way that like if you leave, then you can't come back ever. And can you explain to me how is that that someone that brought here as a baby is taken away from those like, what are you going to do? Go back to your country where you don't know anyone and just start over. Um, so you end up being prisoner of the same immigration policy system, right? And so I thought about that, but I also thought about how isolated, extra isolated I felt during the holidays and the idea that like life has to continue for your family and the people that you left behind, but you were the one left with all that grieving. Um, so that's how my inspiration came. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And and you can absolutely feel that in in this one. I really think so. Um, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced while while making this, and and how did you overcome it? Um, I think uh, it was a little hard to find um, creatives um, that were willing to collaborate in a more collective way. I I come from a different culture and. The kind of movie making I learned is it's more like a, of a collective art. I am a director, but I'm I am more interested in seeing bringing you my project and seeing what that makes you feel and what makes you see. And it was a little hard to find people who will resonate with it. But then finally, I found a lot of immigrants and Latino people that read the script and immediately knew where I was going with that. So once I found my crew, which is the people that ended up working in the movie, it was an easy flow. Fantastic. Interesting. So so what what is the difference between um, people, your, your crew here versus what, how you would have collaborated in Argentina? What What's, you said it's it, people are a bit different here and they, the collaboration process was different. Tell me about that. Um, I, it's very, uh, hierarchical here. Um, uh, yeah, so hierarchical. I've, I've, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've had a lot of instances meeting with creatives that potentially were going to work in the project where they weren't really bringing anything that could um, make the story richer, rather just expecting me to put all these layers and I think that especially for this film all these little nuances that you can find are a product of the collaboration of the 10 people in the creative team you know I wrote this story but it's not just my lived experience the DP was undocumented for 10 years his father passed away while he was illegal so he couldn't even go to the funeral the the main actress was also she had a visa but at the time we were filming, she wasn't. She hadn't been able to leave the country for two years because the embassy of the U.S. in my country was closed. And in order for her to get back into the country, she needed like a stamp. But without the embassy, she couldn't get the stamp. So if she left, she wouldn't have been able to come back. So in that regard, most of us, even the ones that weren't immigrants, could relate in a way where 
we could all like put our eye and see like how will this make you feel things and i feel like a lot of creatives are not thinking of that they're thinking about okay what do you want let's make it happen i don't see sure. art in that i i'm i'm not i'm not the director to come with a camera position plan a lighting scheme like i'm not i'm not that kind of person i want to sit down for hours and hours and hours and just talk about what this is bringing to the table totally yeah that totally makes sense <laughs> i uh you mentioned uh the main actress daniela i i thought she was absolutely amazing i wanted to ask you about uh the casting process with her how did you find her because she really knocked out of the park she's air shattering <laughs> uh -huh. um uh we cast it through a casting company in portland called weebly mountain and uh they suggested that i open the casting call for los angeles so i did and um, I watched 150 tapes, and from those 150 tapes, I selected five. Um, from those five, she was one of the finalists. And to be honest, she convinced me because she, in her slate, she said before reading her lines that she had cried with the script and that she hadn't been able to see her family for the last two years. And the story that she said, was so moving that I knew immediately that I would be able to work something interesting with her. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. You want somebody who can draw on, especially if they've had a, a similar experience, you want somebody who can draw on those same emotions. So that's, yes, that's really exactly. great. She, she was absolutely amazing. So I'm, I'm glad you, you picked her. What was collaborating with her like? Was was did she like make any like super significant contribution contributions to maybe like the story possibly or any insights into the character portrayal? Um, she worked for a while as a nanny, and um, I would say her biggest um, collaboration was I wrote the script in scenes and. We did have some dialogue that I wrote, but the last part of the movie that happens at the bus stop, I just wrote this scene. I didn't write dialogue. So her, I would say her most important work, and it was also the other two sisters, um, is that they were able to improvise that scene that you see without me writing those dialogues. Rather, like, this is what is going to happen, and I want you guys to find how you're going to get to this. And they did. Um, and that's why the film, I think, it's so moving is because it feels so real. Wow. That I didn't I didn't realize that. That's really amazing. And that's totally why it feels so natural and her performance is so great because it is real. I love that. Um, what do you hope that audience will take away from uh your film? And is there a particular message or a feeling that you want to leave them with? Um I think my main objective as an artist is to create something that will make you feel anything. I feel like in these days, a lot of artists just package and sell to entertain. But it's not leaving you with anything to think afterwards. There is no afterthoughts, right? So I just want people to like finish it and have an afterthought like, Mostly, mainly the idea that, like, especially immigrants, we're not commodities. We have our stories, and they sometimes they don't have anything to do with the, the legal status that, that we hold. And I think that we made a pretty good job at maybe leaving that to the side and just showing you how painful it is when you really want something, but you're sacrificing all these things. Uh, so I guess afterthoughts, that's, that's what I would like to hear the most, that it make, it make you think. Absolutely, yeah. Well, um, what's next for you as a filmmaker, as a director specifically? Um, I just want to keep uh, writing and directing. Um, 
my own films uh, on, on the same line. I really like the combination of um, theater and film. So hopefully I will get to do in bigger scales what I did here with the boss of scene. And I, I hope that in my next short film, which is a horror um, gender violence themed horror, that I will be able to um, improvise and work with the act with the actors in the same way that I did uh, for Navidad. Wow. Well, I, I think you have great potential and I cannot Thanks. wait to see what you do next. And I hope that your your next is also in the, the film festival here because I really, really loved this one. Uh, do you have any final thank words you. before we sign off? Uh, no, thank you so much for watching and supporting me and all the all the artists that are at this festival. I'm part of being here and you can find me outside if you want to ask anything. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Roberta, for uh, for submitting your film to the Climate Independent Film Festival. Uh, Navidad de Reserva will be available on Eventive for a limited time as part of our online showcase.